Hey guys, I'm Long Pamai and in today's video I'm going to share an Excel plugin which you can use to extract web tables into your Excel from any website in a matter of seconds. The best thing about this tool is that even non-programmers can easily use the UI to configure them in a couple of steps. Please do not skip forward because I'm going to share some of my experience from this project which will be very helpful later when you implement them for yourself. For demonstration purposes, we'll look at extracting tables from top financial sites like Bloomberg, Money.CNN, Routers, Yahoo Finance, and we'll also look at a non-market site. This tool is for someone who download data from website very often, but don't worry because it is 100% free for all our VBA to Z viewers and supporters. Please feel free to amend the code as you see fit and suggest enhancement and additional features to be added. The only request from you is to support my channel so that I can keep sharing all these useful videos or programs. Before we continue, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for upcoming videos and updates. Let's get started. To start with, let me give a quick demo. Once you open the template, you'll see this template, which the code will be referring for data extraction from the website. Um, before we do the data extraction, You'll see that in your home tab of Excel, you'll see uh, there's a web plugin uh, group created and the sync button is there with a menu about where you'll get the help about the tool and this is for execution. So if I go to this website very quickly now, just navigating there to this particular link, you'll see there's a table here for top ETF from Yahoo Finance. So this is the table that we're trying to import now, okay? So I'm just closing this for now and I'm going to run it. So it's very quick, it just extracted the data from there. If I go back to the link, just to show you the data. which So you can see the symbols which have been retrieved, uh, the name, the price, 50 day average, 200 day average, and so on. Okay, so it's that simple. Now let's try to run it for a couple of more sites. So that was for Yahoo ETF. Now let's do it quickly for currency because it's not gonna take time. This is done. This is for the currency. Now let's do it for energy. I think it's this. Um, just to, s to show you how efficient this code works, um, I just want to show you that, you know, like multiple samples like this. Okay, so this is done again. I'm just closing them. Uh, this is Yahoo again, so I'm not going to run that. Uh, let's go to router stock. So if I go here, let's quickly navigate to the site and see what the data looks like. So from this page, we are trying to take the first table, this one in the middle. So I'm going to close this, we'll reopen them after we're done. You do not need to keep your browser open, you can just uh, keep it closed because this runs with a different technology. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to keep the browser open. So this is done, let's go and quickly have a look at this site. Let's look at this data dump. So this is the data that was imported, as you can see, last change and per change percentage, as you can see here, and then these are the indexes, all the indexes. So going, proceeding to the next one, this is money.cnn, this, um, let's, let's try to run it first and then we'll open the website. So I'm going to the website. So this is the first table, that means this is the one that's trying to import, let's see. Uh, so communications and then, oops. So this communications and the three months uh, percentage change, as you can see here, if you format this in the same format, you'll see that it's 1.14 and then 20 and so on, okay? Now, this is also money.cnn, so I'm not going to run it again. Let's do it for Bloomberg.
so this is done uh, we've done it for Bloomberg as well let me open the table and then this is the first table so as you can see here the figures are exactly as it is in the website so if I maximize this you'll see the additional columns which it has imported from the data uh, from the website okay uh, one last thing this Bloomberg again and then this is the last one I want to cover this is non-financial site I got this request from one of our uh, member in one of the Facebook group for VBA programming so this website is again basically for uh, reporting IP views and then you can retrieve information about IP addresses so I'm gonna run this sync um, import now so it's gonna import the IP information about this 1.1.1.1 uh, okay uh, if I go to the website about this this is the table it just imported okay so that's all for our demo now let me quickly show you how to configure this particular uh, template if you go to sync and click on about you'll see there are three steps that you basically need to configure in your template first you need to identify the web page from where you want to import the table from from this particular table you need to find uh, the index of the table so if I go back here for example uh, one of the website has multiple tables so let's take that example I think this nope three I think this is the one I'm going to go to this Bloomberg site so if you look here this is this is the URL that you need to input here okay and then this table index the table index starts from zero so this is table zero this is table one table two and so on so if there are multiple tables within the page you have to ident you have to mention which table you want to import it from and once you know that table index you'll have to specify the table fields and the data type okay so for example if you look here in this these are the table headers that you need to mention here in the corner here like that okay and once you have that you can specify everything as text but it will make your life easier if it is pulled in the correct data format so for the value you can use number type actually there is one tab called data types and here I've specified this is number so basically uh, don't, don't need any explanation it's a number this is percentage uh, this is for the text or the string and this is for the date okay so coming back to our Bloomberg uh, site this one so here I've said okay for this particular field import the data as text this is as a number this is as a, a number again this as a percentage and all this and then the last one as a text um, the other thing is the so once you identify these three things you, have, you need to update it here the other thing I want to point out here is like you can see here that uh, all these are in caps right all these are in capital letter but if you look here these are in proper case so when I was trying to do my research and R&D I found that uh, though the caption here looks to be in capital uh, here uh, it is in a proper proper sentence format so you have to write in uh, you have to play it around this way because uh, the query is case sensitive okay uh, so that's another thing to point out and again the table index starts from zero so if you want to take it take the second table from the page that will be index number one okay now closing this uh, let's say that you want to create another template replicate a template for yourself so you can easily make a copy of this particular sheet any any of the sheet and you just say create a copy like this so let's say from this particular site let's try for one more example from Yahoo let's say that we want to try it for commodities so the current template is for ETF so here you can just copy the headers uh, like this oops you can copy the headers and paste it here as text first you can do it as you like but I do in this fashion so I'm just telling you this is very easy to do so I'm copying this I'll transpose it here like this 
I'll just copy down the format. It's not important. The format really doesn't matter. And here, um, I want to leave change percentage, this and this as a percentage. So I'll say change and this also as a percentage. Um, this as a text. Last price is a number. Last price is a number. Market time will be in text, and day chart will be in text. So you need to specify all this. So this is dynamic. Uh, if you have more more fields within the table, the code is going to take care of that by itself. So you keep listing down the fields and the data type. Okay. So open interest again will be a number field. This one. So once you're happy, you set it up uh, within this page. I can see there's only one table. So I'll just say that my table index is zero. And then I want to copy uh, this table from the URL. So you have to update the URL as well like this. Okay. So once you're done with this, you can come here and click on import. Now what the code is going to do it will open this side. It will identify the table index. It will construct the, the SQL. Uh, or you know like the formula you can call it uh, like an expression for the web uh, web query is going to import it after it imports it it is going to save the file name with the name of the sheet so let's say this is for commodity so i'm going to save this as a com -M for now it's going to save the file to the to the directory where this particular plugin is okay uh, so once I start telling you about implementation of the code and how I wrote it, then I'll tell you where you can change all this according to your requirement. So I'm going to go ahead and test this setup. As you know, this is very simple again. Um, so going back here really quickly. So the first step, you'll identify the web page. Uh, once you identify the table index, the table fields, the web URL, you're going to come and replicate uh, the fields. I've written here. Uh, one quick thing I forgot to mention is like if the if some of the sites uh, like uh, does not have the table headers, you can specify them as column one, column two, etc. Okay, and you set the web URL as I've shown you now, and then you mention the table index starting from zero, zero being the first. And then once you're done, you go to your Excel driven home tab and click on sync, and then you click on import now. That's going to import the data from the web page, and then it's going to create a new workbook, synchronize all the data based on the query. Um, and the connection and then it's going to save the workbook in the same location okay now closing this um, again you know like we are coming up with um, uh, a UI designing uh, tutorials in coming days so watch out for that um, and again please do not forget to you know like uh, support us subscribe to our channel and like our videos um, so coming back let's run this now so click on import now So here it is. Uh, it has just imported the data from this. So if you look here um, again, gold. Um, oops. So one five six three. The time eight point nine. Again, once you format that to the percentage, is gonna look okay. And the number that's imported so again guys this is this is so easy to use uh, i'll definitely uh, encourage you to try it out um, and now i'm going to quickly show you the code that i've written uh, this is the code um, so if you look at the top here nothing uh, special just declaration about the table headers um, the field names data type uh, once it starts here um, these are all constructors and you know like uh, you know like uh, help in constructing the like a common string for like let's call this like a formula or SQL uh, once we do our connection. This is basically uh, finding out the last row with the data field, and here we are basically doing a construction for the metadata what is required for the table construction. Once we're done with that. It simply just prints out um, what was constructed. So from our last run, you can see these are all the you know like recent from our recent runs. Okay. Oops. Okay. Now coming down here, it called the you know like get web data to function here and passes these parameters. So these parameters basically is the URL, the metadata, and then the web table index and the file name that you want to save as. 
okay so if you want to save this workbook with a different name you can you can have another field somewhere here um, you can in, um, insert a new row or something like that you can change it as far you want now the loop is starting from six so the loop is starting from here so if you move your rows down like this you have to make this start from seven for example like that so the loop will start from seven here for all the fields and construct the our table okay let me do the control z for now uh, this is a single code that runs for all the website it's, there's no special condition for any website so you can run through all the website using this code now coming down here you can see the file name here I specified okay the file name is going to be the part where this workbook is and then the active sheet uh, the active sheet name okay so whatever the sheet name is that is going to be the file name and now coming down to this part this is where the actual thing is happening so if you are new to um, this uh, terminology of web query or uh, power query and so on so in this program basically I use VBA to construct this uh, dynamic uh, power query um, and then um, which is uh, if you're new to data query or power query sorry uh, it's basically a connection technology uh, it enables us to discover like uh, various sources uh, from different databases servers and then it, it can help us to connect to them you can combine that our data set with uh, the data that you pull in from other sources you can clean them you can refine them and so on and then you can use it for uh, your analysis right so this uh, power query again is available for all um, Excel you know starting from 2010 um, using Office 365 at the moment, but if you're using 2010 and 2013, you'll have to download, you know, like um, separately and install them to your to your uh, computer. Let me put the link in the video description so you can find that and install it for this to work for you. Okay. So coming back to our code um, here, let me quickly walk you through again. This is basically a SQL. Okay, select you know everything, select all from this particular table again this index is the table index again and then we're adding a workbook and then within that particular website destination workbook we're adding a query we're constructing you know like what it will be the table what will be the formula uh, whatever we constructed earlier in this section we're passing it to this particular uh, query which is the web page you know like the content and then it's all starting uh, here coming down here specify the source this is where we are passing our metadata and then these are you know like I try to simplify that a little bit by separating this code uh, you'll find this um, the closing statement down here okay and then once this has been set up uh, it at the list object and then uses this connection uh, and uh, you know like all this string to connect to you know like um, to the source and then it prints out the data to uh, whatever sheet was there as active in range A1 so if you want this to be printed somewhere you might want to specify you know select the sheet from here for example like sheets the name of the sheet you know like uh, something like this dot select so that it just adds it to that particular sheet again and if you want it to be printed to the the sheet uh, uh, sorry to the file that you're currently working on this is where you'll manipulate this particular workbook statement as well coming down here uh, it specified command type and then this takes in the SQL that we wrote earlier here at the top and coming down here it just refers to query and then saves the workbook I won't say this is very complicated this this is pretty fairly simple code it's dynamically constructed and I've done a lot of cleanup so that it's easier and friendly to the eye but again please feel free to you know like comment on the video below if you have any questions that's all I have for you today thanks a lot for watching please leave a like or a comment if you found this video informative if you need this plugin I'll be happy to share the entire project please email me at vba to z.team at the rate and I'll respond to you as soon as possible Again, thanks a lot for watching. As always, thanks for your support. Have a great week ahead.